Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor, or Good Vibrations, here to talk about an antenna called a beverage antenna. You may have heard about this particular kind of antenna, and there are some misconceptions floating around about it how it's useful, how it's not useful. I mean, in what ways it it works and in what ways it's not really of much use. Uh, I just got done talking about long wire antennas. And uh, you'll find that video, um, same date as today, in the Ham Radio 2 playlist. I invite you to visit both of those playlists about Ham Radio. Ham Radio 1 with 100 videos in it and Ham Radio 2 uh, just started that one out. I don't want to have more than 100 videos in a playlist. But a beverage is a specific type of long wire antenna intended mainly for, well intended entirely for receiving. The first thing that you need to understand about a beverage is that it is a receiving antenna. It won't work very well for transmitting. But basically, what a beverage is, is a low, straight, long wire. So, so it's basically the same thing as a long wire antenna visually except low to the ground and in fact it's best if a beverage is low to the ground you might even lie it right on the surface but generally a beverage antenna is a few feet above the surface here's the ground and ideally the the terrain should be flat something like you would get in the prairies of South Dakota, my home state, full of a lot of, still you can buy an old hobby farm there in uh, places like Huron, around Huron, Mitchell, around that area, Watertown, Aberdeen, Madison, you can still find some farms around there and go string up a beverage antenna. But here's the beverage antenna concept. There's your little ham radio shack and your beverage. Maybe only about 10 feet up. Let's just say for, uh, you know, you get it up high enough so people won't strangle themselves on it or otherwise run into it. About 10 feet up. Now let's just say you make that thing very long and it should, it needs to be very long. Several wavelengths just like a long wire would be several wavelengths long and beverage antennas are especially popular on bands like 160 meters so let's just uh, dream the ideal scenario okay one hundred and sixty meter heaven Great huge ranch in South Dakota on flat land. Here is your ham shack. You string beverages up in all directions. 36 of them, 10 degree increments around the compass. Each one of them is 10 wavelengths long. That's about a 1,600 meters. That's about a mile. So you have your ham shack and 36 beverage antennas going out around the compass, each one a mile long. So you have a huge disc-like network of wires two miles in diameter. Now that is, in fact, 160 meter receiving heaven. You terminate each one of these wires with a resistor. Now, there's a reason for doing that. You terminate it with a resistor of about 600 ohms. What that's going to do is it's going to make all of these beverage antennas unidirectional so that they will receive in the direction 
going from the far end of the wire to your shack. Signals coming in in this direction will get to your shack and you'll hear them. But signals going in the opposite direction will get dissipated in that resistor. If that resistor weren't there, or if it were a short circuit, it would get reflected back and you'd have a bi-directional antenna. The resistor makes the beverage a unidirectional antenna. And, it ten and the you can do the same thing with a long wire, by the way, up higher. But for now, we're talking about a low antenna. Now, how does this thing actually work? It sounds so far very much like a long wire antenna. It, in a way, it is. In fact, if you could get these things up 100 feet each instead of 10 feet or 200 feet, you could have a tremendous network of unidirectional long wires for 160. But the beverage is a very interesting type of antenna for an important reason. Let's just erase all this gobbledygook and start over with the ground and your shack and your beverage 10 feet up terminated in a resistor at the far end. When the signals come in in this direction, this beverage antenna has an image underneath it, equally distant below the surface as the beverage is above. So if that thing's up 10 feet above the surface, then roughly about 10 feet below the surface, you have the equivalent of the second wire in a parallel wire transmission line. Interesting. So you would think that this transmission line just wouldn't receive at all. It's like a, a piece of ladder line terminated at the end with a resistor. You're not going to hear anything on, on an antenna like that, are you? Well, ordinarily, you wouldn't. If the ground were a perfect conductor in your vicinity, then you wouldn't hear anything because this would, in fact, behave like a transmission line. But what happens instead? As a signal comes in, the ground is not a perfect conductor, so it has a lower velocity factor. The ground has a lower velocity factor than the wire. So as this wave comes along in here like this, going from right to left, it moves faster in this wire than it does in the image down here. And so the wave fronts, as they come in, they start out more or less vertical like this, canceling each other out. But as you move along, the ones up top here on the wire move along faster than the ones here. So these waves are actually shorter. These wavelength nodes, distances between current loops and voltage loops is smaller. So these waves tend to get more and more out of phase. And if you make the wire just the right length, by the time they get to your shack, these waves are going to be just about in uh, out of phase with each other rather and the result of that is that when you connect it to your receiver you're going to get the equivalent of a sharp unidirectional long wire antenna so you might say well why not just put it up 200 feet and use it for transmitting too because for for transmitting this thing just isn't going to work very well it's just going to it's going to be extremely inefficient and it's just not going to function very well. Most of the power will get shorted out and dissipated in the earth. And the same is in fact true of receiving, but the advantage, the huge advantage of a beverage over that long wire, aside from the fact that it's an awful lot easier to get an antenna up 10 feet than it is to get it up 200 feet. <laughs> I mean, go figure, right? The big advantage of this beverage antenna over a long wire for receiving purposes is it is a low noise antenna. 
So you're likely to get a better signal-to-noise ratio. Now your signals are going to be weaker on a beverage than they would be on a long wire. Make no mistake about that. But your noise is going to be even more weaker if you design it and do it right. That is how a beverage works. It's sort of like they call it, it's a sort of, uh, they call it a traveling wave antenna. Because the wave travels along those wires from the far end of the beverage to you. And as it travels, it moves faster along the wire than it does along its ground image. So the result is that when it gets to your transmit or your tuning network or whatever, you hear signals. But only from that one direction. A beverage won't work off the side or off the back if it's properly designed. It'll only work going from, once again, here's the ground, here's your shack, there's your antenna. You're going to hear signals that come from this direction, but not very well from any other. So you have these 36 wires all strung around at 10 degree intervals at the compass and a rotary switch with 36 positions in it. Some kind of flea market you're going to have to go to to find that. Well, maybe you just only make it 10 and separate them by 36 degrees. A 10-position rotary switch, and you can just switch around until you hear the signals coming in best. And that, my friend, if you have a really good transmitting antenna too, is the 160-meter DXers dream come true. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV. You might say slant zero if you want to be completely accurate. From the Black Hills of South Dakota, United States of America, saying 73. Until next time, so long.